本日の試合は主審福島ボーイズと副審西橋久男高田武史スポーツオフィシャルスポーツ交響会 VAR 中村保守去年はこの準決勝でセレッソ大阪に敗れましたがその雪辱を果たすためにこの第2戦かける思い聞かせてください。Bueno, pues lo importante es estar en la línea que hicimos sobre todo el otro día en el segundo tiempo, de tener el balón, de intentar atacar lo más posible. Sabemos obviamente que si mantenemos la portería cero estamos dentro, pero、eh, tenemos que atacar, buscar los goles y ganar el partido. そうですね、あのこの試合、非常に重要になってきます、われわれとしてはあの、この前の試合の後半、できていたような攻撃をまたし続けていければというふうに思います、あのもちろんあの無失点でも次のところにはあの進めますけれども、ただわれわれはそういう考えではなく、あのしっかりと点を取って、攻撃的にいって、勝利をものにしたいというふうに思っています。第1戦は先制ゴールを奪うも、えー、追いつかれて引き分けとなりました、この第2戦に向けての思い、聞かせてください。はい、我々は今日はですね、やるべきことがはっきりとしていますので、えー、しっかりと
をアウェーゴールを取りに行く、はい、そのために積極的にアグレッシブにですねボールを奪いに行く守備をするゴールを目指すそのサッカーをですね全員で徹底したいと思っています。今年こそはといいうう思思あるんでしょうかはい、もうその思いはあキャンプからですね、全員で強く共有してきましたし、私の中でも強く思っていることですので、えー、今日しっかり勝ってですね、えー、ファイナルの舞台に、えー、もう一度戻れるように、えー、戦っていきたいと思っています。ありがとうございました。はい、よろしくお願いします。はい、ありがとうございました。Welcome to Saitama Stadium for our coverage of this J-League YBC Levine Cup second leg between the Urara Red Diamonds and Cerezo Osaka. Brilliantly intriguingly poised after the first, which finished 1-1 just a few days ago and sets us up for this as the two teams compete for a spot in the final Urara two-time winners in 2003 and 2016. So Mizu Osaka, meanwhile, winning this competition in 2017. And of course, Teresa Osaka won when these sides met in the semi-finals last season, coming through 2-1 on aggregate across the two legs before losing in the final to Nagoya Grampus. Kick-off mere moments away. Got a chance to take a quick glance at both teams starting with the Urara Red Diamonds line up in a 4-2-3-1 system with Yusuke Matsuo up front 
They'll be looking to build on what was a promising performance for them in the away leg. They'd have been quietly, reasonably content with getting a 1-1 draw. They led early on, thanks to... They were behind early on, I should say, thanks to Satoki Uejo's goal. And it was Yoshio Kozumi's equaliser that was so valuable. Remember, if we are level and aggregate, we go to away goals to decide. it. Video assistant referee team in operation for all major incidents. This has become the norm for major top flight football matches right across the world in recent times. You can get involved for the likes of goal or no goal decisions, potential penalties, and also red cards as well. Remember, if we get an identical scoreline to the first leg, we will go through to extra time and then penalties if necessary. This is how things look for the Cherry Blossoms, Suizu Osaka who led early on in that first leg, Satoki Uejo with the goal. They do have a very good head-to-head -head record in recent times against the Arara Red Diamonds. They won both league meetings between these teams this season and kept clean sheets in both of them as well. Indeed, they have three wins from four against Suriza coming into this pair of semi-final ties, including, as I mentioned, victory when these sides met in the semi-finals last year. Two coaches on show there, Ricardo Rodriguez, who's been in charge of the Urara Red Diamonds since December 2020, and Akio Kogiku, who's on the touchline for Cerezo Osaka. Fantastic pre-match, Tifo. Just look at that. Absolutely incredible work from fans of the Red Devils to create a visual spectacle here at Saitama Stadium. Now we are almost ready to get going with this second leg. No, but at, at the same time, there is Avispa Fukuoka against Hiroshima. Second leg semi-final elsewhere, but our focus here on the J-League YouTube page live and free across the world is this one, and it is a great pleasure to have your company for it. Hiroshima winning 3-2 away from home against Avispa Fukuoka a few days ago so you'd say they very much have the upper hand in that tie far more uncertain in this one one thing that is clear is home fans are going to make a superb atmosphere and really do the best to help their side into the final off and underway then Urara Red Diamonds attacking from left to right as we look at things Home red, white, and black kit. And they're changed all white strip. Suizu Osaka kicking from right to left. Remember as well that our red diamonds, courtesy of their AFC Champions League commitments, to buy through the group stage and the playoff stage of this competition. So at the not at all insignificant advantage of entering at the quarter-final stage. 16 teams whittled down to four through the group phase and then the playoffs, and then those four were joined by the four who had continental commitments, which was Kanazaki Frontale, the Yokohama F Marinos, Isol Kobe and Urara as well. We're just trying to settle into a passing rhythm. All over the top was just trying to see if it could get them in behind. Didn't quite manage it. Confirmation there again of the system. It's a 4 2 3 1 for the Urara Red Diamonds, matching up against a 4 4 2 from Sarita Osaka. Trying to see if they can create something here. 
definitely going to have to score to go through Sariza Osaka. So I've got to be positive the away side here. And Manaka with the throw. And wins. I was going to say wins the corner, but she spins back. Like he might have done. Patiently worked. Defended back there by Iwanami. And the home side will look to build. Won't need to do much to get this crowd into voice. But that crossfield ball is that well cut out by Tameda. Confirmation that there of the formation for Sarisa Osaka. Much more of a 4 4 2. Mykuma and Tameda will look to get up and down in those wide midfield positions to support Kato and Uejo up front. Mitsuki Kato is one to watch in particular for Sarisa Osaka. He's got a very good goal record against the Urara Red Diamonds. Hooked up with the winner when these sides met in the league on the 14th of September. Suki Kato also scoring when these sides met in the semi-finals of this competition last year too. Focus there on the Suizu Osaka keeper, the experienced Jim Hyun Kim. The fans will hope he's not too busy tonight. Set forward by Schultz. Good diligent pressing up there from Matsuo. Little dummy in behind. It's good covering defending and it needed to be from Iwanami. Some numbers there from the first leg that finished 1-1 in this tie. So Izu Osaka led in the second minute thanks to Satoki Uejo. And in the 53rd minute, a crucial away goal, Yoshio Kozumi scoring for the Urara Red Diamonds. Fans really making a good noise here, getting behind their side, a club with so much history, including being AFC Champions League winners in 2007 and 2017. It's not been the easiest season for them. Wouldn't have been expecting to be sat with five games left of the J1 league season in ninth. I'd say that winning this competition is a big chance of success for them. on Matsusaki. Ricardo Rodriguez deep in film on the touchline. Here are Red Diamond Spanish coach.
first set piece chance of the game for either side. Swung in. Doesn't really beat the first defender. Not the best ball in it has to be sent from Tomoaki Okubo. Worth saying as well that Cerezo Osaka won here when these sides met. In the league not too long ago. Back on the 14th of September. Matsuki Keito with the goal. Cleared under pressure, but Wessel had already gone for a foul. time that Hirara Red Diamonds have actually beaten Suiza Osaka in the last six head-to-head -head meetings between these two was 2-0 win back on the 12th of December last year in the Emperor's Cup. Yurara building nicely on the counter-attack. Is there something at the end of it? Well, despite the appeals of the home fans and players, no foul given. Tomato. Taka Tomeda who got the assist for Kato's winning goal when these sides met in the league here back just 11 days ago Suo will be keen to get in the game the Yamara Red Diamonds as the lone striker in this 4-2-3-1 he's like to drift off into channels to try and get on the ball as well he's a relatively positionally flexible system the likes of Akubo Matsuzaki and Koizumi breaking forward in various combinations to offer support to let it run out in the end does well to win a throw in Alexander Schultz focus there on Riku Matsuda the 31 year old right back for Sarito Osaka trying to work something here Sarito shot on the turn nothing for Nishikara to be overly concerned about Suki Keito trying his luck. I mentioned his excellent record against the Ura Red Diamonds. Scored the goal that sent them through to the final last season. 
and it was set up very similarly to this really albeit the other way round the first leg was a 1-1 draw here Juncker giving Urara Red Diamonds a lead in just the 12th minute then Yamada equalising for Sarizu Osaka and in the return leg just one goal Osaka Kato's goal to take Sarizu Osaka through to the final Pressure, Sakine looks cross-field, trying to break out from that press. Relatively quiet start in terms of goal mouth chances here. Look back there on the bottom left of your screen. With the last three meetings between these two. As mentioned in both of the J1 league encounters this season, is the Cerezo Osaka Cherry Blossoms who have prevailed by two goals to nil, and then goal to nil 11 days ago. Indeed, it's Cerezo who are eight points ahead of Urara in the league standings. Urara sat very much in mid table in ninth, 18. Suizu Saka with a lot more to play for in fourth. 48 points from 29. They're three points behind Hiroshima in third. Having a game in hand on them as well. In the fight for top three spots and being in the AFC Champions League qualification mix for next season. down but not a head injury so on we go lovely link up play played hurriedly out by Matsuda and now we'll come back for that injury in the centre circle see Makuma picking up a knock in midfield chance for Cerezo Osaka to break if they can do it quickly it's a three on three Tameda will link up down the right Maikuma Work a good crossing opportunity, they can't. Good work from Ito, Iwao, and Akimoto. Just hustling the press in that corner of the field well. Oh, one me. Again, though, Sarizo Osaka keen to press high themselves. Looking for an intriguing tactical contest here. semi-final second leg off and underway as well still goals between Hiroshima and Avispa Fukuoka Avispa Fukuoka making it to the semi-finals for the first time in their history having reached the quarters in 2016 looking to win a rare major trophy and uh, Shigatoshi Hasebe's coaching well Hiroshima and uh, Michael Skibby, winners of this competition back in that 
beg your pardon, runners-up in this competition in 2010 and 2014. Have won three J League titles, so have more consistently been winning trophies in the Japanese football circuit. Ball in, there was some confusion between Schultz and Iwanami. Now nicely worked. That's good pressing from Sarizu Osaka. Unconvincing clearance from Sakine. And now on the half volley, smashed over. Akuma did score when these sides met in the league earlier on this season, back in May. On the score sheet in a tuna win for Sarizu Osaka. Say Makumu has uh, an important roll down that right midfield channel for Sarizu. Sarizu also known as the Cherry Blossoms. Jonic. He's definitely noticing that the Red Diamonds aren't quite as keen on a high press as Suizu Osaka in this game so far. All content to sit just a touch deeper. Of course, that although the Urara Red Diamonds got a bye through the group stage and the playoff stage due to their continental FC Champions League commitments, Suizu Osaka have had to fight their way here in a run that started right since the beginning of the regular season, pretty much. It's a long old cup competition, the IBC J League Levine Cup, assuming that you start at the group stage. Final will be the 13th game that Suizu Osaka have played in the competition this season if they get there. It's a competition spread across almost eight months of football. It'll be relatively irregular patterns of games in that time with the first game way back on the 23rd of February. Good little skills from Matsuo. I swerve one in. There was a moment when Jim Kyung Kim wasn't 100% sure of his angles behind him. First round of matches in this competition played in late February. And a couple of group stage games in March, two in April. Group stage rounding off in mid May. And then the two legged playoff matches being played in early June. Quarter finals in early August. Bringing us to now for the semi finals week that we're in. I know on the 22nd of October, we'll be at the National Stadium in Tokyo. Just about to shoot Kato, had it taken off him. That is brilliant defence. Needed to be as well from Kenny Wow. Exactly what you want from a covering defensive midfielder. Just bailing out the back four when they were somewhat concerned, more than concerned. Natsuki Keito has haunted our Red Diamonds before. He's got a really good head to head record against them.
Little ball in behind, beautifully worked by Sarisa Osaka. Kato's on the inside and it's deflected in. Sarisa Osaka have the lead. Seiya Maikuma scores. He was on target when Cerezo beat them in the league back in May. And now he puts them in front in this semi-final second leg. Cerezo Osaka have the away goal and they have the aggregate lead. Great fast link-up play down this right-hand side between Riku Matsuda, Hiroaki Okuno and then Maikuma. But yeah, that's going to go down as an own goal. Takes a horrid, horrid deflection. That is rotten luck for the Urara Red Diamonds. It comes off Takahiro Akimoto. Well, we can try and claim it. But uh, there's no way it will go down as Maikuma's goal. Not that Suiza Osaka will care too much. Confirmation there. Cerezo have the lead in the tie. And they've got that away goal, which remember they had to get to progress tonight after the Ural Red Diamond scored one last week, a nil-nil draw. And of course, them failing to score in any combination at all would see them out. And again, they're right on the high press and they've won a corner. I was going to mention the question will be will Sarisa Osaka have the bravery to keep that high pressing approach and they've got that goal there might be a natural psychological intention in the back of their minds to sit back Suddenly, it's a small pocket of away fans you can hear particularly loudly here at the Saitama Stadium. Not a down. It's almost another, but instead... Ishikawa in the Urara Red Diamonds goal has been caught. Experienced 36 year old. Just getting a, a boot to the glove here. And it's Satoki Uejo looking to turn it in. Uejo who scored in the first leg. A rather awkward one. Nothing too bad for Shusaka Nishikawa. Every chance of change might be needed here. is the substitute keeper but it seems for now at least that Shusaka Nishikawa is determined to continue Again, that high pressing approach is causing problems. It's exactly what you'd want from the wayside in the second leg of a semi final in terms of how they've approached this and what they've done so far. Great ball forward. Might yet have a second here. Tomeda. Brilliant block. And then splashed over by Yamanaka.
again you see the Urawa Red Diamonds more content to let Suzu Osaka have the ball at the back not pressing quite as aggressively and that's partially as well because Urawa Red Diamonds have only got one up front in Matsuo so you have that pair of Uejo and Kato. Yeah. This will carry forward from Suki Ito from central midfield, but the end round into a bit of a cul de sac of three white shirts. Tomeda's cross, little dummy, and dinked over the keeper, and Sarizu Osaka have a second. They've taken complete control of this tie now with two goals in six minutes. It's a long, long way back for the Urara Red Diamonds from here. They need to score three goals unanswered now. Two away goals in quick succession for the Cherry Blossoms. Just helped over the keeper by Hiroaki Okuno. A really composed finish with pressure on him from the onrushing Nishikara as well as defenders too. And it's dreamland for Sarizo Osaka. Now the home fans, for the first time here, truly are pretty silent. And it is the Cherry Blossom supporters you can hear. that is a particularly significant goal because when you factor in that the first leg of course finished 1-1 now means that Sarisa Osaka have two away goals to the one that the Urara Red Diamonds have scored so as those permutations in the bottom left hand corner of your screen confirm it now means that the Urara Red Diamonds have to win this game in the 90 minutes to progress if it is a draw from here, then Teresa Osaka will be through. Because of getting those two away goals, it changes the picture so much. Finishes 2-2. Teresa Osaka will progress to the final on away goals. Teresa coming forward again. Yakuno, who has already popped up with one goal in the BCJ League Levin Cup this season. Uh, that's a very valuable second. Scored in the 4 1 win against Shonan Belmar. Earlier on in the campaign, as Sarizo Osaka progressed 5 1 on aggregate.
maybe just joining us a little bit late. Fantastic to have your company on the J League YouTube page. We missed a, a couple of goals in this one. Same by Kuma, putting Suizu Osaka in front. Pretty much exactly at the midway point of this first half. And then seven minutes later, Hiroaki Okuno making it 2 0. Makuma's goal is quite probably, after review, going to go down as an own goal for Takahiro Akimoto. A cross that Akimoto couldn't really do much about. Just hit him on the way through. cushion ball down the line sense that the Urawa Red Diamonds really do need one back quickly here just to help instill a sense of belief in the fans the players and the supporters you can hear in the background Teresa Osaka fans Kato on the high press Iwanami to do for Ricardo Rodriguez and the Rara Red Diamonds he's going to find three goals unanswered for the second year in a row and losing in the semi-final to Cerezo Osaka still goalless in the other semi-final we've Less than 10 minutes to go until half-time. Hiroshima will be perfectly content with that. Of course, they're in control of that tie, having won the away leg by three goals to two. Hiroshima victorious last week in the... Earlier this week, I should say, in the first leg, thanks to two goals from Takumu Karamura, with one from... To Kasa Shiotani in between. Hiroshima were in complete control of the tie, 3 0 up. And then a late pair of goals from Juanma Delgado. Just gave a visible Fukuoka a bit of hope coming into this return leg. Remember again, the fact that they've scored three away goals is particularly crucial for Hiroshima. Vicious crossfield ball, too much on the crossfield ball. Remember, of course, with the Iran Red Diamonds only starting their campaign at the quarter final stage, it hasn't been a long run to this point of things for them. to take out the defending champions the Goy Grampus in the last eight a long one draw away from home that's who are on target and then Morishita got one back for Nagoya in the home leg here the second leg at Saitama Stadium the Royal Red Diamonds blew Nagoya Grampus away two goals from Atsuki Ito and then Isaka also on target back on the 10th of August but Six weeks or so later, in this semi-final second leg, it's been a somewhat different story so far. Also, Isu Osaka progressing on the away goals rule. 1-1 at home against Kawasaki Frontale, thanks to late equaliser from Taggart. And then got through in the most dramatic of circumstances in the second leg. They were 2-0 down away at Kawasaki Frontale. 3-1 down on aggregate with time running out. 
Mitsuki Kato got one back just as the game drifted into stoppage time. And then Yamada's goal in the 96th minute, the sixth minute of injury time, took them through on away goals after they finished three all on aggregate. So they were oh so close to not being at this stage, Shirisu Osaka. It's a good challenge comes in. And it just breaks up an attack for the Urara Red Diamonds. So still yet to really test Jim Hyun Kim in the Suiza Osaka goal. And that's Izaki just trying to drift in field off that right wing. Good patient possession from Suizu Osaka. They have, I'd have to say, look the side more comfortable on the ball. Crossfield from Matsuda for Yamanaka. Tameda. Tameda over the throw. Taka Tameda, who set up the winner. 11 days ago when these sides met in the league. It's almost one of those where the Red Diamonds might think if they can just get to half-time a chance to regroup and rebuild. Matsuda, who's seen plenty of the ball, those two fullbacks, Matsuda and Yamanaka. And here's Yamanaka. You can hear just the whistles of the home fans and some very excited Cherry Blossom supporters in the away end. Sumasu Saka, who won this competition as part of a cup double with the Emperor's Cup in 2017. They never won the G1 League itself. Runners up in 2002 and Diamond's not able to keep possession for long. I'm going to have to not just change the tide in this game, but change the tide of the head-to-head -head between these two teams. Shizusaka with four wins from their previous six meetings against the Irara Red Diamonds. I did beat them in the Emperor's Cup in December last year. And there was a draw in the first leg of this semi-final. Given that record, it's no surprise that Suiza didn't really come here particularly fearing playing at Saitama Stadium.
Red Diamonds just trying to launch something here. Again, just as I say that, Ito loses it. Might be a possibility on the counter-attack for Kato. Kato still trying to get onto it. Alexander Schultz had to be very careful there. And he's dribbled his way out of trouble quite nicely in the end. Far away here, and Suizo Osaka right now making a another big step towards what could be one of the very best seasons in their club's history. Historically, since 1995, and their record as a J League member, times jumped up and down between J1 League and the J2 League from the J1 League in 2001, 2006 and 2014 promoted back to it in 2002, 2009 and 2016 just finished in the J1 League, the Japanese top flight and they finished 4th in 2020 well placed to possibly better that finish this season they sit in 4th Three points behind third place Hiroshima with a game in hand. Cross comes in, flashes through pretty much everybody, smashed up in the air by Tomeda. Taka Tomeda slightly needlessly putting his keeper, Jim Hyun Kim, under the pressure of the high ball. To two minutes added on at the end of this first half. A lot of the home fans still watching in stunned silence. So those two away goals, six minutes or so apart, made it a, a very long way back from here for the Urara Red Diamonds. in the best of form recently either just one win in their last five matches across all competitions a 4-1 victory at home against Kashiwa Antlers in the league back on the 10th of September maybe a chance to work something here though deflected cross towards that far post and just took too long Takahiro Sakine Good defending, but Sakine may well have been better just hitting this first time. And that's at least got the home fans back into voice. Equaliser really could have changed the look and feel of this tie going into half time. Could have given Urara a sense of hope. Waited a second too long, Sakine, that allowed the defence to cover across. It's a five on five if they can break with pace here. Strike from distance, not far off from Satoki Uejo. Scored the opening goal in the first leg in just the second minute. Almost on target there as well. That's Suzaki. Tried to leave it for Matsuo. Instead picked up by Suiza Osaka, who have dominated this first half and are deservedly comfortably ahead on the scoreboard thanks to two crucial away goals in just seven minutes. Seiya Maikuma might claim the first, but in truth it was Takahiro Akimoto own goal after his unfortunate deflection. Sent it past Nishikawa. And then on the stroke of the half-hour mark, Hiroaki Okuno Made it 2-0, so Cerezo Osaka in control of the tie. The Urara Red Diamonds need three unanswered goals in the second half to progress. At the half-time stage, it's the Cherry Blossoms in control of this YBC J-League Levine Cup semi-final second leg. It's the Urara Red Diamonds nil, Cerezo Osaka 2.
Welcome back to Saitama Stadium for the second leg of this J League YBC Levine Cup and the second half that sees the Urara Red Diamonds trying to pull off what would be something of a mini miracle, you'd have to say. The home crowd after 15 minutes to rest and recover from the shock and disappointment of that first half that saw them concede two valuable away goals are back in great voice. You can see those flags behind. The goal where the Diamond's most vocal supporters sit. They will be attacking towards that end. Or I should say stand, really, because they're up on their feet most of the game. So Iso Osaka will have the task of quietening them once more. So on track for a fifth win in the last seven meetings with Urara. They beat them in the semi-finals last season of this competition. And they're now 45 minutes or so away from a chance of winning it this season. Off and running for the second half. Suizu Osaka attacking from left to right as we look at things. The Urara Red Diamonds kicking from right to left. Scored three goals unanswered as they had to progress from here. Obviously taken down. That could be one of them. And well saved by Jin Hyun Kim. Well, that is in the first minute of this second half. Far more attacking intent than we saw in the entire first half from the Urara Red Diamonds. Crossfield ball. Nicely taken down. A powerful strike. That's exactly what you need when trying to pull off a comeback like this. Just something to get the crowd going, something to get the players going. Maritari with the effort on goal. Maritari with quite an impact, having pretty much just come on at the half time break in place of Kai Matsukasi. And it's a terrible bit of defending from Kim and now a chance sliced wide well Suisu Osaka not helping themselves at the start of this second half doing their best to give the Aurora Red Diamonds a glimmer of hope Jimmy on Kim passing it straight out and then it dropped for Yatsuke Matsuo it's amazing how Time break can sometimes completely change the momentum of a game as it's late in on Jin Hyun Kim. Every right to try and go for the ball there. And it was the keeper that clearly got there first. Suddenly, I imagine, there'll be quite a few nervous Suiza Osaka fans. They won't really need Jin Hyun Kim being down injured as well. well it's not going to help the nerves either. The 
Kim Kogiku on this side trying to hold off the charge from the URA Red Diamonds at the start of this second half. And this break in play might not be the worst thing for Sirisu Osaka. You can see there, fans there just a touch more circumspect. Headed back from Matsuda. And Kim got to the ball first. lifted in and the header gives Sarisu Osaka a third Matsuki Kato haunting the Urara Red Diamonds yet again scored the winner against them in the league 11 days ago scored the goal last season in the semi-final meeting between these two that took Sarisu Osaka to the final and he may yet have confirmed Sarisu Osaka's place in another YBC J League Levine Cup final here. A beautifully guided header at the far post that may yet end any hopes of Urara Red Diamonds putting up a fight in this second period. Well, now the Urara Red Diamonds have got to score four. And Sariza Osaka will hope that that will be that. It's against the run of play at the start of this second half. It's a big, big goal in the context of the tie. Suki Kato, Suiza Osaka 3 0 up on the night, 4 1 up on aggregate. Ball in from Matsuda, and then Yamanaka with the assist. Now Ricardo Rodriguez has really got to get his troops going. It's tough for a head coach. You can see there'd been a, something of a rally and cry at half time. It came out much improved in the first five minutes or so of this second half. And now instead find themselves further behind Matsuda's ball in once more. This rate, the Urara Red Diamonds truly will be sick of the sight of Sarisu Osaka. Urara lining up like this for the second half, still in the 4 2 3 1 system that we saw in the first half, but with Kazuaki Maritari on. Something of a, a reorganization. After Bringing Maritari on. Push Takahiro Akimoto up a, a bit further forward. This is how the Tsurisu Osaka side look for this second half. Still in that 4 4 2, we're still in the first and still unchanged. And given the way that first half went, 
not exactly a surprise that they are unchanged. Worth saying as well that that call for Natsuki Keito pushes him yet further up the scoring charts of the YBC J League Levine Cup. He's on to four goals in the competition this season. Puts him level with Masaki Ikeda from Shonan Belmar. They go Masukake from Kashiwa Reiso and Taika Nakashima from Akado Kusodoli Sapporo. And second. And Junior Santos of San Frosty Hiroshima, San Fris Hiroshima, who scored six. Of course, the way things are going, it looks like as well as this game, Kitu might have a final to try and add more to that tally. Is cutting in off the wide. Maritari only puts it wide. Great credit to the home fans for still being a good voice here. Despite the score line. Flashed wide from Maritari. Still goalless in the second leg of the other semi final, which kicked off at the same time as ours. Hiroshima 3 2 up against Avispa Fukuoka from the first leg, and Hiroshima, of course, also, of course. Crucially winning it with uh, three away goals. So now back at home. You see, they're very much the favourites to progress from that one. And this by Fukuoka. Got to find some away goals and they've got to find them pretty quickly. And Tom, nicely constructed move that and just taken off Akimoto. He was potentially about to shoot on the turn. In comes the corner in swinging. And flashes through and well, you don't want to be too harsh but that slightly sums up the you know, Red Diamonds in attack tonight we've not seen a lot from them going forward in truth certainly cannot be said up the other end beautiful cross from Raisuke Yamanaka there was Suki Keito yet another goal to add to his collection against the Rara Red Diamonds it's 11th his 11th this season in all competitions his fourth all in this competition this season so he's going to suck on for one of the very best seasons in the club's history up there with 2017 when they finished third in the top flight won both this competition and the Emperor's Cup never won other major silverware before or since is Matsuo Suo in dealt with easily enough. Alexander Schultz furious. Sometimes body language tells you all you need to know. Fusion and consternation. And the Urara Red Diamonds defence have been pulled apart tonight by Sirizu Osaka. Chance to get a good set piece in here. Really do need a goal very, very quickly now. Approaching the hour mark. And I've got to find four. Looked in by a wow. And there was Kim to gather.
Chance to get another. And they have. Offside flag up though. Might as well put the ball in. Video assistant referee will always check it. Well, that one doesn't need a long video assistant referee check. But Suki Keto through. In fact, left it in the end. Always good practice though to put the ball in the net. Then knowing that you can always go back and check it. Let's move a goal. John Joe Shelby scored for Newcastle in the Premier League last season, where the opposition keeper, in a bit of kidology, was trying to say that the flag had gone up, so there was no point playing on. Shelby put the ball in the net, it was checked, it was found to be onside, and the goal was given. Indeed, uh, assistant referees right across the world have been told to generally keep their flags down allow play to go on until the passage of play is complete. Sushi Saka denied a fourth. Sariso who after this one have five games left in the J1 league as they fight for a top three spot. Potentially AFC Champions League football next season. four of those five games coming up in October before the season finishes home against Nagoya Grampus on the 5th of November home against Shonan Belmar on the 1st of October away at Kashira on the 8th away at Tokyo on the 12th and then at Kyoto Sanga on the 29th so three of the next four after this one away as well strike on the turn it goes but deflected so your are red diamonds will have a corner and Suki Ito with the effort corner gathered by Kim Maritari, who's been bright since coming on. And you wouldn't have to say that Kazuaki Maritari, the half-time substitute, has offered more in an attacking sense than any other URL Red Diamonds player today. And what's been a, a pretty disappointing night for them so far. About four goals in under half an hour for Akio Kogiko's side. You see them exit the competition at the semi-final stage for the second year in a row. Won this competition twice before in 2003 and 2016. Four times runners up as well. And it's that man there, Mitsuki Keito, who yet again has been their nemesis. Keito scoring the third goal. Scored the winner in a 2 1 aggregate victory in the semi final between these two last season and scored the winner league meeting 11 days ago we'll regroup after this one and back into the rest of the league season the Urara Red Diamonds where they sit the mid table in ninth We've got Hiroshima away on the 1st of October Sagantosu at home on the 8th Sapporo at home on the 12th and then a trip to Yokohama F Marinos on the 29th of October before finishing off their season at home against Avispa Fukuoka on the 5th of November Avispa Fukuoka in semi-final action in the other semi-final right now and they're going to need something quickly otherwise they'll be out 3-2 behind after the first leg against Hiroshima and goalless in the second leg 
Yanshim, of course, with three away goals of, as well. So, Vispa Fukuoka with all the work to do behind on aggregate and away goals. Carry forward. Foul on Hirotaka Tameda. Blossoms fans you can hear in such good voice, unsurprisingly. swinging option of Takuma Suzuki and the out swinger from Yamanaka it's Yamanaka's ball in it's Kato who was there Suzuki Kato looking for his second goal of the night fifth in this competition across this season Change is coming. Double change for both sides. It's Satoki Uehicho scored in just the second minute of the first leg. It comes off. It's a, a double change up front with Tsuke Keito, I imagine, to the relief of the Royal Red Diamonds. Withdrawn as well. A defensive minded pair of changes, though. Two forwards coming on in the form of Suta Kitano and Hiroshi Kiyotake. Meanwhile, for the home side, Takahiro Sakine withdrawn, and is Tomoaki Okubo. In their place, Taro Isaka and Jasper Junka. These pair of attacking changes would suggest to me that they're pretty much going all out here. They're going to something of a 3 4 3 system. Both sides have completed their double changes. The truth is to see exactly what shape it looks like the Urara Diamonds have switched to from their 4 2 3 1. It does appear to be a 3 4 3 with Yasby Junker down. Left wing roll. 
Suizo Saka, it seems very much sticking with the 4 4 2. With Kiyotake and Kitana now on up front. Pulled inside for Juncker, who with his very first touch is almost scores. Nicely taken down by the Dane. Who whistles it wide. A really good bit of creative play to get him into that position from Yoshio Kozumi. Who scored equaliser in the first leg. Not long after half time. Kozumi also scored a 2 0 win here. The last time you are Red Diamonds beat Cerezo Osaka, a 2 0 victory in the Emperor's Cup back in December last year. Worth saying again, of course, the final will be on October the 22nd. Around a month or so's time. back worked inside some appeals for a penalty there suggesting that just flicked up off the hand and again suggestions it flicked up off an arm that one is given as a free kick set up they are running out of time and if they are going to pull off the miraculous and really get those fans going pretty much at the point where they need to score a goal I and mean, they've got to find four in under 20 minutes now Atari was about to deliver it he's just caught the referee's attention as he was about to do so bit of pushing and shoving in the box that he wants to preemptively deal with. Looks in, head up, but by no means away. there of what a, our crew reckon it's been the changes from Jasper Juncker and Tari Saka coming on so put them in a 4-4-2 I'd suggest it's a touch more offensive minded than that in terms of how it's actually playing out nice run down the right almost gets Rara Red Diamonds on the scoreboard it's a really good Switch of play from Otaru Isaka. It's really a simple nod in from Yaspianka, but good covering defence. In comes the corner. Headed up. 
eventually cleared by Suiza Osaka. They're just steadily moving closer to a spot in the final. Catching practice for Kim. Others might have an eye on occupying the clock. Suiza only seems to have an eye for scoring more goals. The goalkeepers in that situation with this scoreboard would have taken their time. ball around the corner into the last 15 minutes of normal time here you have to say right now it's looking like a very calm and professional job from Suizu Osaka was it a brief resurgence at the start of this second half from the Urara Red Diamonds that third goal from Suki Keito Seems to have done a lot to Quelle. Third change of the night here for Suiza Osaka. Otaki Tamida has played his part down the left of midfield. Comes off. And then comes Jean Patrick. Three subs made by both sides now. They can use up to five, of course. to feel a, a touch for him tonight as the lone striker in this Urara Red Diamond system he's had precious little in terms of service opportunities to get into the contest Suizu Osaka set to put another chapter into their RBC Chaley Glavin Cup campaign as John Patrick with his very first touch his sprints clear might be a good chance for a fourth here has just too much on it for Kitano. Of course, it was a long, long time ago that they started their campaign. Back in Group A, they faced their arch rivals Gambra Osaka twice in the Osaka Derby. We shall ultimately get the better of them. Gamba finishing third in the table, Cerezo finishing second with 11 points from their six games. Kashima Antlers, the group winners, onto Trinita finishing third. She was winning 3 2 against Gamba Osaka on the 23rd of February. winners against the Kashima Antlers and those two wins set them up really well for the campaign. 6-1 victors against Oita Trinita. Did lose 3-1 against the Kashima Antlers then had a goalless draw in the Osaka Derby in late April. Finished off their Group A campaign with a 3 all draw away at Oita Trinita. 16 teams at the group stage in the top 
two from each group, so eight progressed through to the playoffs. This is Jean Patrick. Jean Patrick with a chance to make it four and makes no mistake. The substitute scoring almost immediately after coming on. And Cerise Osaka are romping into the final now. 5 1 up on aggregate, four away goals. And for the second season in a row, they will be putting the Urara Red Diamonds out of the J League YBC Levine Cup at the semi final stage. Any of the faintest of doubts that they might not be utterly confirmed here. Nice composed finish from the Brazilian. I think got his way through. Urara Red Diamonds piling players forward, leaving themselves exposed at the back. And there was Jean Patrick to take advantage. Only came on three minutes or so ago. And now is on to the score sheet. Confidence boosting goal for John Patrick. His role has been used to being a substitute in recent times was not in the squad for the first leg or for the two all draw away at Jibiru Iwata eight days ago and came on as a sub in each of the three previous games scoring in the win at home against Sagantosu it's a nice start coming in the 2-1 win 2-1 loss I should say at Sapporo back on the 2nd of September See Akio Kagiko still urging for more from his side, even with them being 4 0 up. Sean Patrick's first goal in the YBC J League Levine Cup this season, and this is seventh appearance. A few of those being off the bench. Well, great credit to the home fans. You, even with the scoreline so bleak, continue to cheer on their side so adamantly. Two more changes. Coming here, final two of the night for Sarizo Osaka, say Maikuma, who made it 1-0 in the 23rd minute, and then Hiroaki Okuno, who scored the second just seven minutes later, both come off. And it will be a, a little run out here at the end for Bruno Mendes and Hikaru Nakahara. And just look at those fans. You would have no way of knowing that their side are 4-0 down terms of that behavior and support. Yoshio Kozumi comes off. Kozumi who scored the equalizer in the first leg. Kai Shibato on in his place. Headed wide from the set piece. Takahiro Akimoto up there who's been promoted further up the pitch in the second half. And drifts, drifts wide.
That's Bruno Mendes. He's just come on. Trying to get round the back. Foul on Schultz. Almost into the last five minutes of normal time, and it does look like we're dotting the I's and crossing the T's. And the Cerezo Osaka. Not just a win, but an emphatic win, the way they've done it. a fifth win in their last seven head-to-head -head meetings against the Ural Red Diamonds of course beat them in the semi-final of this competition last season 2-1 on aggregate at the only time that Ural have beaten them in their last seven encounters it's a 2-0 win in the Empress Cup in December last year was swung in by Akimoto chance bravely blocked in there by Toyumi recycled by Schultz still nil nil in the other semi-final so bar a late twist there Hiroshima will be progressing Hiroshima at home of course tonight having won the three two having won the away like three two last week uh, earlier this week just a few days ago catching practice for Shin Hyun Kim he hasn't had a, a lot to do you will have to say in goal for Sarisa Osaka that will be a, a real confidence boosting win for Sarisa Osaka we'll going to the final on the 22nd of October feeling pretty good about life Extend their unbeaten run as well. So five in all competitions. Which of course drawing in the first leg. They had a two-all draw at Jabir Uwata in the league. That was eight days ago from now. Coming after a 1-0 win at the Irara Red Diamonds 11 days ago here. Saki Kato with the winner. 2-1 victory at home against Sagantosu. A pick up in form after in late August and early September. They lost three games in a row. Losing at home to Hiroshima in the league and then away at Sapporo. And being defeated 2 1 at home against Hiroshima in the Empress Cup quarter finals, which dented and indeed ended the prospect of them repeating their 2017 season when they won both the Empress Cup and this competition, the J League YBC Levine Cup, in the same season. They are still on track for their third major trophy. As for the Iran Red Diamonds, it would be just one win from their last six matches across all competitions. Suzuki down. So we we'll hope it's nothing too serious. As this one drifts towards stoppage time. from Jean-Patrick scoring will pretty much his first touch after coming on albeit by then Kiyoko Giko's Suisa Osaka had done a lot of the damage through those goals two and six minutes in the first half from Seiya Makuma and Hiraki Okuno and then Mitsuke Keito just after half time ending what had been a, a good short spell for Hirami Red Diamonds in the five minutes or so after the restart Mm 
nicely worked through the midfield and spread wide. Chance for a fifth here. Sean Patrick. Sean Patrick. Didn't hit the target. He thumps his head in frustration. And apologises to his teammates for shooting rather than passing. Three minutes added on at the end of this one. And there are Red Diamonds grab a, a consolation goal. Nice ball in. And somehow goes all the way through everybody. Out to Akimoto on the left. Akimoto dinks it back and kept alive. It was towards Juncker. Struck on the half volley, but much like a lot of the Rara Red Diamonds attacks tonight, nothing that will overly bother Jin Hyun Kim and the Suiza Osaka goal. Great credit again to those home supporters here at Saitama Stadium. Right throughout this game, even with their side being second best, you'd have to say right across the pitch. They've been vocal in their support. Suizo Saka well they've given it away almost given the Red Diamonds a goal and lost their clean sheet the last minute of stoppage time and Yamanaka's slip doesn't prove costly in that regard and elsewhere it's into the fourth minute of stoppage time between Hiroshima and Avispa Fukuoka goalless in that second leg after Hiroshima won the away leg 3-2 so it does seem Increasingly certain that Hiroshima runners up in this competition in 2010 and 2014 will be meeting Sarizo Osaka in the final. Hiroshima losing to Jibio Uata and then Gambo Osaka in their two appearances in the final. Sarizo Osaka, meanwhile, marching on to try and repeat their heroics of 2017. And here at this very stadium, they beat Karasaki Frontale 2-0 to lift the J-League YBC Levine Cup. And tonight, they've been far superior to the Urara Red Diamonds. And so they will have a great chance to win this great competition once again. As for the Urara Red Diamonds, two-time winners in 2003 and 2016. They, for the second straight season at the semi-final stage, have been put out by the Cherry Blossoms. We've dominated them in the head-to-head -head recently, won both league games without conceding a goal, and have come through emphatically 5-1 on aggregate here, thanks to goals from Seiya Maikuma and Hiraki Okuno in seven minutes in the middle of the first half. Mutsuki Keito scored just six minutes into the second, continuing his run of seeming to always pop up with important goals against the Aurora Red Diamonds including the winner in the semi-final meeting last season and then John Patrick the substitute 10 minutes from time put some further gloss on it Sarisa Osaka winning 4-0 on the night and into the final for the second straight season looking to avenge that disappointment of losing out to Nagoya Grampus in the final last time around on the 30th of 
October 2021. And on the 22nd of October 2022, they will be in the final here at Saitama Stadium up against Hiroshima. It's been a great pleasure to have your company wherever you've been across the world on what has been a brilliant night for the Cherry Blossoms and their travelling fans. They win 4-0 today. They win 5-1 on aggregate. Your final of the J-League YBC Levine Cup will be Cerezo Osaka versus Hiroshima. And we look forward to seeing you there.見事な3点目を決めました。勝利の立役者加藤睦希選手です。おめでとうございます。ありがとうございます。決勝進出につなげるために非常な重要なこの第2戦。まずどんな思いで試合に入ったんでしょうか。まあ、あの前回の試合で
さあ2年連続の決勝進出おめでとうございます、はい、ありがとうございます試合前アグレッシブな守備から攻撃へそう話していましたがまさにそれを実現した90分になったんで,ではないでしょうかはい、えー、本当に選手たちが、えー、今日イメージしたあ準備してきたこと本当に出し,出し尽くしてくれたあ結果がですね、えー、今日の勝利につながったと思いますし、えー、本当に選手の頑張りに、えー、感謝していますその中での大量4ゴールこの攻撃の手応えどう感じていますかはいあのー、リーグ戦2試合とオールバンカップのファーストレグ相手の良さを消すそういったサッカーに、えー、少し重視したんですけれども、まあ、今日はもう必ずですね、えー、アウェーゴールを取りに行かないといけないそういう状況の中で、えー、本当に、まあ、今まで、えー、いろんなあ準備をしてきた中で、えー、ハイプレスからの守備そして攻撃と。といったところもキャンプからですねしっかりと準備してきた成果をですね選手たちが本当に表現してくれたというふうに思っていますさあそして去年の忘れ物を取りに行く戦いへと進みます決勝への思い聞かせてくださいはいまずその切符をですね、えー、全員で掴み取れたことは、えー、非常に嬉しく思っていますただ、えー、その忘れ物を取って、えー、完結ですので、えー、もう一度ですね全員でいい準備をして必ず忘れ物を取ってですね、大阪に、えー、セレッソファミリーの皆さんに、えー、届けたいというふうに思っています。ありがとうございました。はい、ありがとうございました。